not much of a landlubber, but sometimes I get no choice in the matter. Besides, there's business to take care of. Malady said this Meister lady's the key, so we follow her lead. Beast pauses for a moment to consider whether he's forgotten anything important. I'd also appreciate it if we dealt with this Lohar fella. He's the key to unlocking this mess Justinia's made. So, there's some things you ought to know about me. I'm sort of... kind of royalty. I mean, I, I never wore a crown. Not with diamonds in it, anyway. I once stuck a wreath on my head and... Oh, sorry. I need to stop with that whole tangent thing. Anywho, let's just get it out there. I'm a bastard. The literal kind. And the other kind. The, the royals weren't all great with me, and I weren't too great with them. To make an overlong story over short, I started the rebellion and got caught and exiled to an island prison. Like Fort Joy, but ten times worse. I would have died there too, if one of Justinia's ships hadn't sailed so close. So, I kind of took it, and off I went. <laughs> cool, right? And then I came upon the victory. Nice ship. The royal sailors walked the plank as well as you could hope for. And that's where I found the notes. Right there in the open. Next to the manifest. Then I'll be quick. Queen Justinia's ordered some dwarf named Lohar to ambush a ship called the Peacemaker and take its cargo. Whatever's on it, she's using it against the rebels. She calls it Operation Downfall. Pretty ominous, eh? So, yeah. Hoping to find this Lohar fellow and stop the Operation Downfall thing. And there you have it. Tangent free. Mostly. Well, not mostly. A little. Okay. A dying shark lies gasping on the sand, bleeding from the mouth and gills. It turns its dark and soulless eyes to you. Its bloody gills open in search of water, but find only air. It gasps in the air, struggling for the breath to speak. Its own blood froths at its mouth. No, die here. <gasps> Monsters in the water. Monsters in the deep. Monsters bigger, <gasps> more and more growing. It looks at you with its cold, flat eyes as if to say, do what you will. Then it turns away and gets back to drowning in the bloody sunshine.
A buoyant swim. Your name is Joe. You're nine. You're brave. You're off to see your mum. A shadow moves below you. A jagged vice closes on your thigh and pulls you down. Water fills your lungs. Blood billows. This shrine fills you with a sense of peace. It is a safe haven. You feel weightless, as if lifted by a silent wind. For just a moment, your mind is free of wonder and worry.
That boy Woken had someone in his pool.
<laughs> Cornered. <laughs> Just a caravan. I remember one just like this. No, it's not true. Can't be true. That doesn't sound promising, does it? Makes my bones itch.
You remember a cold childhood in a no-hope fishing town, bullied mercilessly by a dwarf named Loha. With no other prospects, you sign up as a magister, eager for the power denied you all your life. From the dark, you stare up at the thin slivers of light visible between the floorboards. Shadows ripple across the slivers, accompanied by heavy footsteps, magister footsteps. Wood creaks above your head. One of them has paused. Your breath catches in your throat as you wait for him to move along. But the hatch is suddenly yanked open. Light floods you, blinding and accusatory. You hear only one gruffly barked word before the hands seize you. Gotcha! You twist your head around as the magisters haul you away. Your wife and two boys stand in the doorway, helpless. You commit their faces to memory one last time. Wendy cries out something to you. You tell yourself it was, I love you, or we'll wait for you. But the truth is, you didn't catch it. The farm recedes from view behind you. Work, work, work. That's all there was in Driftwood for a dwarf like you. Until you got involved in the anti-magister resistance. Then, the work was still there, but also purpose. Purpose worth dying for. Not real. Not happening. Lucky find. No, it's not true. Can't be true. Followed by magisters in the far north, you were force marched to this foreign land. A moment of hope as a grinning dwarf removes your source collar. Seconds later, void woken death. You stride past the chain sorcerers and climb onto the caravan without complaint. As you settle onto the bench, you offer Relic's blessings to the Magister Guard. He offers only a bleary-eyed stare of disinterest in return, before shoving the chain sorcerers aboard. As you watch them cower, you cannot help but feel annoyance. After all, don't they know they're going to be saved? Can't be real. Not real. Not happening. No, it's Eloisa was not the prettiest girl, not to others, but to you. Her luminous eyes shone brighter than the moon. The day you collared her for Fort Joy, you wept every tear you had. You never cried again. Warm red wine flows down your throat. The languor of a tavern evening soothes you. Suddenly, shrieks rend the night. The magisters have come. Warm red blood flows down your face. Not real. Not happening. No, it's not true. Can't be true. No, no, no. Can't be real. Not real. Not happening. No, it's not true. Can't be true. White as drifting salt, the dwarf flinches at your approach, yet she holds a short, clean blade aloft. Her fierce stance can't hide the trembling of her fingers. I know you're all a fright. In times like these, I don't blame you. But I ain't out to hurt you. 
Now, why don't you take a few breaths and tell me what happened? She slumps, all bravado draining from her. No, no. I've never seen anything like those beasts before. Are, are they gone? Void walking, you mean? Poor thing. No wonder you were scared. I'd be scared too. Those? Yes. Worst ones I've ever seen. Ripped through the Magisters. The dwarves. Dead. 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 And the sorcerers. Sorcerers. Gone. Her eyes stare vacantly into the distance, glassy as marbles. It's not cold, yet her shivering is relentless. I don't know. I don't know. Oh, Duna's beard. Loha. My b -b boss, Loha, will want to know what happened to them, but I I can't remember. Loha, eh? Where will I find this boss of yours? Oh, well, you'll find him in Effie's Emporium, leave the Black Ball. He's a fine man. A little gruff, yeah. But he's the only one in Driftwood wanting to help and not hurt. She looks up at Beast through tear-stained eyes. But you can see her resolve hardening as she remembers who she is and what she stands for. I... I... Oh, Seven Sympathy. I saw those things dragging the sorcerers along the cliffs towards the Wreckers' caves. I... I... Oh, no. No more. It's gone. She flinches at the slightest rustle of wind through the long grass. Terror in her eyes, she stumbles away from you. Can you hear me? A scruffy kid bounds up and stands before you, hands on hips. He stares at your face, doubt screwing up his features. for you. Chap called Baron Lavery wants to see you. Black Bull Tavern, first floor. 
The kid shoves his hands in his pockets and ambles off, whistling an off-key tune. Did you expect a needle?
what Raymond would do. Be grateful that you don't feel the need. I won't steer you wrong. Get yourself in check, boy. I won't have you running off like Milsent and Tully. You'll just end up sliding down some Void Vulcan's gross gullet piece by piece. The older looking Magister notices your presence and does a double take. He squints and peers at you closely before shaking his head. Cool, Aldous. He's a spitting image of that sorcerer fellow, ain't he? Thought you were someone else for a second there, lad. Someone with no business in Driftwood. But enough of all that. What word do you bring? His face goes pale, and his eyes open wide. The Magister that greeted you remains stiff, as if enduring a harsh wind. The Void Woken come. Hush, Fader. You may pass, Traveller. Dare say you'll be aching to leave before long anyway. But before you do, find Raymond, the White Magister. He'll want to know what you've seen. Be quick, mind. He's set to sail any moment. He nods his head in the direction of the bridge, but offers no other instructions. As long as you stay put, you'll be safe. Uh, are you sure? Them sorcerers from the caravan? The Magister smiles, but he does not make eye contact with you. He shifts his weight from the left foot to the right. Thank the Seven I've oldest to guide me in these times. He allows me to borrow a bit of courage from him when I need. It's, it's true, what you say. My belly's as yellow as a canary, but when the hammer comes calling, you don't refuse. It's just, it's only a matter of time, you know? Outside Driftwood, not even the sharpest blades can protect us from those things. Inside, a Magister killer roams. Our numbers dwindle. I'm hardly fit to protect. I only hope to survive. I know they disappear without a sign. Magister Carver's looking into it, but it's been so long since we've talked, a dwarf could have grown three beards by now. Farewell. As long as you stay put, you'll be safe. Ah, uh, are you sure? Them sorcerers from the caravan? They'd be daft to come back. And as long as there's no sorcerers, there's no void woken. You're fine as long as you don't go wandering. The silent monk's stitched lips are the color of sea ice. The expected happens. Nothing. The silent monk, like... Here I summoned my wolf right in the tavern. All hell broke loose. Good times. Good times. I wonder if they'll remember me. I'll be riding horseback. We dwarves had a kingdom, and a proud knight was on. Evans to Bessie, another one. More queer folk than commoners in Driftwood these days. Just look at you. Tame owl. Eyes of a wolf. You don't come from no farm. I can tell you that. Anyway. Tavern's just down the road. Can't miss it. Cause that's where all the queer ones go. <laughs> Clanking dwarves, dozy lizards, 
I even saw him drag a void woken down there in the dead of night. Don't know what's going on in that tavern, but it must be a freak show in there. Maybe I'm glad I ain't pulling carts of stinking fish round no more. But what's a beast to do if not pull? How can a beast enjoy this when he's no notion of what his future holds? I'll be spooked till I'm securely hitched up again. But don't come over. What? what? I offer nothing less than the wisdom of the angel. The woman in front of you yawns so wide, you can almost see what she had for lunch. Catching your eye across her wares, she rolls both of her own. Oh, a customer. Welcome to Four Sisters. Creator, sooner you tell me what you want to buy, sooner I can get back to doing what I like best. Nothing. So? She sighs deeply, as irritated as if you just threw a... Well, I do sell sorcerer sundries, don't I? It'd be a bit hypocritical for me not to use my own product. You know, if you want to add some razzle-dazzle to your own gear... She looks you up and down. Slowly, it is clear that you are found wanting. You really should. Yeah? Well, I'm past caring. The world's about to end. Who's got the time for dainty manners and etiquette? And praise Lucia. Her face cl- Though, I do hope she's all right. I know the Seekers didn't fare so well. But my sister's all... She shakes her head, and the concerned look vanishes. Repla anyway, did you buy some of our sorceress sundries from her? She narrows her eyes right back at you, and folds her arms to boot. And why would she do a thing like that? Ugh. Our weak spot. Well, I suppose I can play along. So, I'll give you a discount if you can guess my riddle correctly, too. How about you do that, and then you can go away, yes? You should know I already regret this. So, see me run, I never walk. I have a mouth, I never talk. I have a bed, I never sleep. I can be shallow, I can be deep. What am I? Wow, you got it right. And what a challenge it was too. I am so impressed. Now, what'll you buy with your discount? Don't hurry back.
As the Magister's eyes alight upon you, they widen until they are practically bulging out of their sockets. One tremulous finger rises from voluminous robes and points right out. From her other hand dangles handcuffs. Wouldn't you like to know? among friends. Never forget it. If I'm Ben Mezd as I live and breathe. I don't know how you got free, but it'll be back to the joy with you and no mistake. One eye squints. The other bulges out even further, as if to compensate. Oh, it's you, all right. It's definitely you. The Magister looks at you again. A shake of her head and a flick of her wrist, and you're on your way. On your way. Uh, sorry for confusion. And enjoy your stay in Driftwood. You're safe among friends. Never forget it. My, but what a scowl. Seems to me you could use a touch of magic. Have at it. Got yourself situated. Well, don't come over. Not like you're buying anything. If I don't come visit your ton, who will? Wouldn't you like to know? Keeping it together, Bree. I'm all right, as long as I don't think about it too much. You're safe among friends. Never forget it. Together, Bree. I'm all right, as long as I don't think about it too much. You're safe among friends. Never forget it. Stinks of the void. What kind of rat would sell such filth? Keeping it together, Bree. Kind that don't fancy starving. I'm all right. As long town. as I don't think about it too much. It's all well and good for you. You're safe among you friends. We we'll never take forget what we can it. get. Yep, yep. Sold us from a cell floor. The carved figure is a resplendent sight in this ramshackle village. Your touch creates a ripple across the mosaic, as if it were water and not stuff. I'm all right, as long as I don't think about it too much. You're safe among friends. Calm as a coiled Never. spring. You needin' supplies? I'd stock up if I were you. It's nothing more. Shut up! 
worse over here than a dozen rotten eggs dropped in a vat of vinegar. Then don't come over. Not like you're buying anything. There's a lot I of don't come for the junkie sale, then. Who will? Wouldn't you like to know? Why, I offer nothing less than the wisdom of the ancients. And... Vapid fiction, along with the large helping of hand. To later then. Keeping it together, free. I'm all right as long as I don't get committed too much. You're safe among friends. Never forget that. my friend. The war, the bishop, the queen. What tickles your fancy? Ain't looking too good for them lizards. Word is, the divine order's gonna win the ancient empire and hit it hard. You remember what happened to the elves, don't you? Ain't no one left standing when you treat them to death, Bog. Seven, save us. Stabbed in the back he was by them vile, low-born, treacherous seekers. Kill them all, I say. Do them like Magister Raymond did, old Lady Seaver. I mean, they doomed us all, didn't they? The Son of the Divine is dead, gone. Who'll save us now? Jolly Justinia, Queen of the Dwarves. Ha! Scourge, more like. Here's 20 or so, noble gentlemen. No one knows what they did wrong, if anything, and she has them stripped and whipped all the way to the execution grounds. Didn't even give him the dignity of the sword. No, sir. You ask me, and I say she's mad as a mink with its tail on. How are you holding up? Not in any mood to talk about it. Hear ye! Hear ye! Queen 
Justinia executes two dozen noblemen for insubordination. Keeping it together, Bree. I'm all right, as long as I don't think about it too much. You're safe among friends. You'll never forget the boy. What kind of rat would say? The kind that I fancy stars. It's all well and good for you with your rations. We've got to take yeah, the yeah. Keeping it together, yeah, please. Yeah. Keep talking. I'm all right. As long as it's not going to save too much. You're safe among friends. Never forget. You're holding up. Not in any mood to talk about it. <laughs> hear ye! Hear ye! Bishop Alexander was slain by singers! Culprits still at large! Keeping it together, Bree. Together, Bree. I'm all right, as long as I don't think about it too much. You're safe among friends. Never forget it. Hear ye! Hear ye! Bishop Alexander was slain by Seagans! Culprits still at large! Wars are brewing, my friend, and I'll stand by your special prices for you. War is hell, my friend, but it's very good for business. Good luck to you.
feels worse over here than a dozen rotten eggs dropped in a vat of vinegar. Well, don't come over. Not like you're buying anything. <laughs> I don't come visit your ton. Who will? Wouldn't you like to know? Buying or selling? Capital. Good luck to you. over here than a dozen rotten eggs dropped in a vat of vinegar. Well, don't come over. Not like you're buying anything. If I don't come visit your ton, who will? Wouldn't you like to know? worse over here than a dozen rotten eggs dropped in a vat of vinegar. Then don't come over. Not like you're buying anything. If I don't come visit your ton, who will? Wouldn't you like to know? Smells worse over here than a dozen rotten eggs dropped in a vat of vinegar. Then don't come over. Not like you're buying anything. If I don't come visit your ton, who will? Wouldn't you like to know? Executes 
Smells worse over here than a dozen rotten eggs dropped in a vat of vinegar. Well, don't come over. Not like you're buying anything. <laughs> Tell me, if I don't come visit you, your tongue, who will? Nothing good. The void woken are everywhere. Thank the divine you're here to protect us. I... I... I yes, yes, of course. You're safe among friends. Never forget. How are you holding up? Not in any mood to talk about it. over here than a dozen rotten eggs dropped in a vat of vinegar. Well, don't come over. It's not like you're buying anything. If I don't come visit your tongue, who will? Wouldn't you like to know? Keeping it together, Reed. Your fish stinks of the void. What kind of rat would sell such fish? Kind that don't fancy starving along with the rest of this town. Never forget. It's all well and good for you with your rations. We've got to take what we can get. He told me to all for you led that bit in sawdust from a cell floor. Ah. Wars are brewing, my friend. Special price. War is hell, my friend, but it's very good for business. Good luck to you. Bishop Alexander was slain by Sagos. Alfred's still at large. For a sick dog. There's a lot of call for the junkies. A glance at the dog's miserable face tells you it's sick, all right. What am I, dogs, doctor? Dog sick? Go on, kiss a penny for a sick dog. Party for a penny? You can sing him a love song and call him mummy. Thank you kindly. The dog lies there quietly, clearly in great pain. What are you looking at? I'm sick here. Get lost. It snaps at your hand. It flinches. A low, threatening growl builds within its throat. Under the collar, you find the sharpened points of metal rivets, gouging the poor dog's skin. The dog bears its teeth at you and growls. The dog gives you a long, hard stare, but does not bite you. Yet. The dog goes to bite your hand, and then realizes the pain is gone. Hey, I feel okay. Thanks, man. Think I'll wander off now. Here, before I go, what can I do to show my gratitude? Master did. Huh? Uh, wait a minute. Master hurted me? 
Excuse me a minute. I'm going to go now. But first, I have a thing I need to do. He turns to his master. You bad man, you! <laughs> Penny for a grievy beggar whose dog ran away. God damn it. That was my livelihood. Penny for a grieving beggar? I reckon I'm owed it here. You wouldn't do that, would you? Oh, yes. You would do that, wouldn't you? I couldn't prevail upon you to change your mind, could I? He gives you a cool look, then rummages in his pocket. He hands you the contents. That's your lot. Go on, then. Get lost, you freeloader. I'm working here. John, what? I offer nothing less than the wisdom of the angels. Vapid fiction, along with the large helping of hell. Glad to see you well. Anything more? Until later, that. My singers! Calbridge still at large! A most vile.
in there, mister. The master isn't home and the magister's locked her house up for her. They were very angry about it. They said mean things about the master and they left a mess. She's my friend. She was one of the magisters once. She was very high up. She used to look for god people and help them. But then she stopped that and just stayed in the house all the time. She used to play with me. But then the Magisters took her away, they did. They took her outside the village. I'm not allowed outside the village. She looks around theatrically to see if there's anyone listening. When the wind blows from over the stream, I can hear the Meister. I can hear her crying. She gives you a look of the darkest meaning. Then she takes a deep breath, puts on a happy smile, turns and skips away. 